Hello everyone. So, as a continuation of the ECG lecture series, in this session, I will be discussing abnormalities of the R wave. So, if you see the R wave, R wave is a positive wave which appears after the Q wave in the QRS complex. And this particular R wave is due to ventricular wall depolarization. So, if you see this particular slide, you can see this is your ventricular wall depolarization. So, the direction of your ventricular wall depolarization is towards the electrode. Right? It is towards the electrode. So, when the wave of depolarization is towards the electrode, then you will have a positive complex and that is nothing but your R wave. Right? That is nothing but your R wave. Now, if you see the normal ECG, how will be the R wave in different leads? Let me try and explain to you. So, this is the normal ECG. So, you have to understand that the R wave in the chest leads or precordial leads, there will be progression of the R wave. You see in V1, the R wave is very small and in V2, V3, the R wave will start progressing and by the time V4, V5 and V6 appear, you will have a large R waves. Right, you have the large R waves. Okay. Now, the point here is why you have that particular progression of the R wave. Right? Why do you have that particular progression of the R wave? Now, let me discuss that. Okay. And other point is the R wave is completely absent in case of the AVR. Right? So, you have a negative complex in AVR that is your S wave. Right? That is your S wave. And you don't have R wave in AVR as well. Now, why is this in a normal ECG? Let me try and explain with the concept. Now, if you see here, this is your heart, right? So, within the heart, if you see the electrodes, how are they placed? The chest leads V1 and V2. V1 is placed on the right side of the sternum and V2 is placed left side of the sternum, adjacent to the sternum. And then gradually, right? And gradually, you have V3, V4, V5 and as well as V6. Now, you take the wave of depolarization. How does it pass? It will pass from the SA node to the apex of the heart. Right? The wave of depolarization is passing towards the apex of the heart. That means electrical activity is moving away from your V1 and V2. You see, V1 is placed here and V2 is placed here. The electrical activity is away from your V1 and V2. It is towards your V5 and as well as V6. And at the point of V3 and as well as V4, it is equivocal. So, the electrical activity will move towards V3, V4 and then immediately it moves away from your V3, V4. And that is the reason why you will have the appearance of the R wave in V3 and as well as V4. And by the time V5, V6 occur, I mean, by the time V5, V6 appear, the electrical activity is completely towards your V5, V6. So, that is the reason why you see you will have a greater amplitude R wave in V5 and as well as V6. Now, in AVR, why don't you have any particular R wave? Why? Because AVR is eg exactly at this point, right? That is your augmentation of the right limb. So, in the augmentation of the right limb, the electrical activity is moving away from your right limb. So, when the electrical activity is completely moving away from the right limb, you will not have the R wave in AVR. Okay. So, R wave is due to what? Ventricular wall depolarization. And why is it positive wave? Because the wave of depolarization is moving towards the electrode. But if the wave of depolarization moves away from the electrode, then you will not have the R wave. Prominent R wave is not seen. Now, what is the abnormalities of the R wave what we have to study now? So, you take in V1, how is your R wave? A very small R wave. So, one abnormality what we have to discuss is, what are the conditions where you will have 
dominant R wave in V1. Right? What are the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in V1? Now, you see in AVR, you don't have a prominent R wave. But there are certain conditions, abnormal conditions, where you will have dominant R wave in AVR. And then finally, you take in a normal ECG. How is the R wave? The R wave, it is gradually progressing. Right? R wave is gradually progressing. But there are certain pathological conditions where you have poor R wave progression. Right? Where you have poor R wave progression. So, the abnormalities what we need to discuss here is dominant R wave in V1, dominant R wave in AVR and poor R wave progression. Now, followed by that, you see this particular MCQ. In all of the following conditions, dominant in all of the following conditions, dominant R wave in V1 is seen except right ventricular hypertrophy, left bundle branch block, right bundle branch block and posterior wall MI. So the first abnormality of the R wave what we are discussing is the condition where you have a dominant R wave in V1. So you will have dominant R wave in V1 in right ventricular hypertrophy in right bundle branch block and as well as in posterior wall MI. But in left bundle branch block, you will not have a dominant R wave in V1. I will also show you the ECG. See, this is the ECG of the left bundle branch block. In left bundle branch block, if you go back to my section on the QRS complex, I have said you a mnemonic how to recognize the ECG of left bundle branch block. In left bundle branch block, first and foremost, the very important change is there will be widening of the QRS complex. Right? There will be widening of the QRS complex. And you need to remember a mnemonic that is Williams. Right? That is Williams. Okay? So now, what is this Williams? W-shaped S-wave in V1, M-shaped R wave in V6, right? M-shaped R wave in V6. So that is what is your Williams, okay? So in left bundle branch block, there is no dominant R wave. Right? There is no dominant R wave in case of the left bundle branch block. Whereas remaining all conditions, I'll just show you the, those ECGs as well. In RVH, RBBB and posterior wall MI, you will have a dominant R wave. First, I'll just show you all the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in V1. That means abnormal conditions. Then I will show you the respective ECGs as well. So, these are all the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in V1. See, dominant R wave can be there in V1 physiologically in children and as well as in young adults. And pathological conditions where you have dominant R wave in V1 is right ventricular hypertrophy, right bundle branch block, posterior wall MI, dextrocardia, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and as well as the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Okay, so these are all the conditions or these are all the causes of dominant R wave in V1. Right, these are all the causes of dominant R wave in V1. Now, let me show you the ECGs of the respective conditions. So you see this. A 56 year male chronic smoker presented with pedal edema and as well as ascites. Right, presented with pedal edema and ascites. ECG is shown here. What exactly is the diagnosis? Pulmonary embolism, 
right ventricular hypertrophy, acute left ventricular failure, emphysema. So, this patient is a chronic smoker. So, definitely there would have been development of some lung pathology. And the individual also has developed pedal edema and as well as the ascites. So, secondary to lung pathology, if the individual had developed pedal edema and ascites, means that should have been a case of core pulmonary. Right, that should have been a case of core pulmonary. So, what is your core pulmonary? Core pulmonary is a clinical scenario characterized by right ventricular dilatation followed by right ventricular hypertrophy secondary to pulmonary or pulmonary vascular pathology that is what is called as core pulmonary and in these patients with core pulmonary subsequently there will be development of right ventricular failure right subsequently there will be development of right ventricular failure okay now you take the options pulmonary embolism pulmonary embolism the most common ecg finding will be sinus tachycardia and there will be right heart strain pattern and there can be right bundle branch block as well in pulmonary embolism so if you take the heart rate yes the heart rate is nearly around 100 per minute in this particular ecg complex but yes and you also have the right axis deviation in this particular ecg and you have the features of right ventricular hypertrophy right you have the features of right ventricular hypertrophy now how can you because the answer here is definitely right ventricular hypertrophy now how can you differentiate this from the pulmonary embolism now why because so you have a classical history that he is a chronic smoker so in chronic smokers there is high chance of development of copd right so in copd or any lung pathology that can cause hypoxia which will cause pulmonary artery vasoconstriction increases the afterload on the right ventricle and there will be right ventricular hypertrophy right and there will be development of right ventricular hypertrophy so in right ventricular hypertrophy what all will be the ecg changes there will be right axis deviation and you will have the features of rvh what are the features of rvh so the features of the rvh include the presence of dominant r wave in v1 and not only that you will have the presence of deep s wave in v6 you take a normal ecg see this is a normal ecg in this normal ecg you see how is your s wave right you don't have s wave or negligible s wave but in patients with the right ventricular hypertrophy you will have the presence of deep s wave in v6 so so this is the presence of deep s wave in v6 all right that you will have in patients with the right ventricular hypertrophy so if you take the criteria for your right ventricular hypertrophy there should be a tall r wave in v1 and in v1 r by s ratio right r by s ratio in v1 is more than 1 right it is more than 1 and there should be a deep s wave in v5 and as well as v6 right there should be deep s wave in v5 and as well as v6 so these are some of the criteria i'll show you the criteria of the right ventricular hypertrophy so these are some of the important criteria right tall r wave in v1 that should be of more than 0.6 millivolts that means 6 mm r by s ratio should be more than 1 mm deep s wave should be there in v5 and as well as v6 the remaining all are also the part of the right ventricular hypertrophy criteria but these are some of the important part of the criteria and there should be also the presence of the right axis deviation right so these are the features of right ventricular hypertrophy now i will also explain you the concept now why you have this particular dominant r wave in v1 in right ventricular hypertrophy let me explain you now you take this particular ECG strip and as well as the heart. Now this is your right ventricular hypertrophy. 
right this is your right ventricular hypertrophy so in right ventricular hypertrophy where will be the axis of depolarization or the wave of depolarization the entire wave of depolarization is towards your right sided leads because whenever there is right ventricular hypertrophy the axis of direction of depolarization will completely move towards that particular side where you have increased muscle mass so increased muscle mass in case of right ventricular hypertrophy is towards the right side so the wave of depolarization is towards the right side so that is the reason why you take in v1 right if you see in v1 you have the presence of right you have the presence of dominant r wave in v1 right you have the presence of dominant r wave in v1 okay and why do you have deep s wave in v6 because the wave of depolarization is moving away from your v6 when wave of depolarization is moving away from your v6 what will happen to your s wave the s wave will be deep right the s wave will be deep okay and you also have a deep q wave as well right so this is about the ecg in case of the right ventricular hypertrophy now you see the next mcq a 42 year old female presented with history of dyspnea on examination there is wide fixed split on auscultation ecg is as follows what is the diagnosis right bundle branch block left bundle branch block right ventricular hypertrophy posterior wall mi so what is the condition the common condition where you will have wide fixed split that is in asd right wide wide fixed split of second heart sound right so what is the condition where you will have wide fixed split of the second heart sound that is in the clinical scenario of the atrial septal defect and in atrial septal defect in long term right as the time progresses or as the cvrt progresses as such the patient with the asd they become symptomatic by third to fourth decade and as the cvrt if the size of the asd is more as the cvrt is increasing gradually these patients they develop pulmonary artery hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy okay now secondary to this particular pulmonary artery hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy there can be right bundle branch block so in hypertrophied right ventricle that right bundle branch whichever is passing it gets compressed and it gets blocked okay so this particular ecg is suggestive of right bundle branch block now what are the features of your rbbb right so you go back to my section on the qrs complex there i have explained you in detail but why am i teaching you here then because even in right bundle branch block you have a dominant r wave in v1 you have a dominant r wave in v1 so if you take the criteria of the rbbb there should be wide qrs complex right there should be a wide qrs complex and the next thing is there should be presence of m shaped r wave right there should be presence of the m shaped r wave in v1 and there should be presence of w shaped s wave in v6 so which is nothing but marrow right which is nothing but marrow okay so 42 year female presented with history of dyspnea on examination there is wide fixed split on second heart sound on auscultation ecg is given to you what is the diagnosis so the diagnosis is rbbb so you can make out that there is wide qrs complex you are having this particular m shaped r wave and a slight w shaped v6 right let me tell you the ecgs will not come by reading your mnemonics mnemonics are for you to easy way of remembering okay right now so until now what all we have discussed where you have dominant r wave in v1 right ventricular hypertrophy right bundle branch block right and let me show you the other conditions where you will have the dominant r wave in v1 okay before that yes so you see here whenever there is right ventricular hypertrophy in patients with asd secondary to pulmonary arterial hypertension the right ventricle it gets hypertrophied and there will be 
blockade of this particular right bundle branch. Once there is blockade of the right bundle branch, then we get an ECG suggestive of right bundle branch block. Now, so you see this question. All of the following are the causes of RBBB except right ventricular hypertrophy or core pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, ischemic heart disease, infective endocarditis. So the conditions which will cause RBBB is right ventricular hypertrophy or core pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, ischemic heart disease, rheumatic heart disease, myocarditis or the cardiomyopathies, then degenerative disease of the conducting system. So degenerative disease of the conducting system, it includes Lives disease, right? Lives disease. So these are all the conditions where you will have the right bundle branch block, right ventricular hypertrophy or core pulmonary, pulmonary embolism, ischemic heart disease, rheumatic heart disease, myocarditis or cardiomyopathy, degenerative disease of the conducting system that is Lives disease and Lennegrace disease. Right, Lives disease and Lennegrace disease and congenital heart disease like atrial septal defect. So these are all the conditions where you will have the right bundle branch block. Now you see the next question. A 56 year male presenting with chest pain. A ECG was done and coronary angiogram was also done subsequently seeing that there is some abnormality in the ECG. Now after doing the coronary angiogram, which vessel do you think that it is blocked? Left anterior descending artery, left main coronary artery, right coronary artery, left circumflex artery. So what is the abnormality you are seeing in this particular ECG? You are able to make out that there is a minimal ST segment elevation in the inferior leads and along with that you are able to make out that there is ST depression in V1 to V3 and along with that you are also having a dominant R wave in V1 to V3. Right, dominant R wave in V1 to V3. So this is the ECG of the posterior wall MI. So this posterior wall MI, which vessel do you think it might have blocked? It is the right coronary artery. Right, so in posterior wall MI, it is the right coronary artery which is being blocked. Okay, so now what is the criteria for posterior wall MI, the criteria for posterior wall MI include number one, there will be dominant R wave in V1, right? Dominant R wave in V1, then ST depression from V1 to V3, right? And there will be there may or may not be ST elevation in 2-3 AVF. So if there is also associated 2-3 AVF ST segment elevation like this, this individual is having both inferior wall MI and as well as the posterior wall MI. But if the individual is not having this ST elevation in 2-3 AVF, that is called true posterior wall MI. Right, that is called true posterior wall MI. Okay, so these are the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in V1. Right, now followed by the discussion of the dominant R wave in V1. Okay, see in a clinical scenario of posterior wall MI, what you have to do is, you see here, this is the normal ECG. Hmm? You will not have the ST depression in V1 to V3. Right, the ST segment will be flat and you take V1 and as well as V2, you don't have a dominant R wave. But in posterior wall MI, you will have a dominant R wave in V1, V2, V3, okay? Now, so whenever you are suspecting a posterior wall MI, what you need to do is V1, V2, V3 leads, they have to be replaced. V1, V2, V3 leads, they have to be placed at V4, V5, V6. 
V4, V5, V6 leads, they have to be placed at V7, V8, V9. If you take V7, it is placed at the posterior axillary line. If you take V8, it is placed at the tip of the left scapula. And if you take V9, it is placed in the left paraspinal region. Right, left paraspinal region. So, this is what is the placement of your posterior leads. So, in if you are suspecting a posterior wall MI, see the same patient, right, the same patient after placing the posterior leads, right, after placing the posterior leads, these are the ECG changes. So V7, V8, V9, whatever you have placed posteriorly, you see here in V7, V8, V9, you have ST segment elevation. So in MI, actually, what is the ECG feature? ST elevation should be there. But in posterior wall MI, we are not keeping the leads routinely over the posterior side. That is the reason why in V1, V2, V3, the electrical activity is moving in the opposite direction you have V1 to V3 ST depression. So once V1, V2, V3 ST depression along with dominant R wave in V1, V2, V3 is there. Once you are suspecting posterior wall MI, you place the leads posteriorly, then it becomes V7, V8, V9. Then in V7, V8, V9, you will have the ST segment elevation. Now, followed by that, you see this next ECG. So this is also the other ECG where you will have a dominant R wave in V1. You see this? But so if you see the next ECG, we have a 32 year male presented with history of chest pain since one day. He says after taking a pill, his chest pain further increased. ECG of the patient is as follows. What is that pill the patient has taken? Aspirin, nitrates, clopidogrel, metoprolol. So, this particular ECG is suggestive of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Right? So, in patients with the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, remember, there are certain drugs which are contraindicated. Like nitrates, contraindicated. Digoxin, contraindicated. Diuretics, contraindicated. Sympathomimetics, contraindicated in patients with a HOCM. So, if these patients with HOCM, if they take nitrates, the chest pain will further increase. So the pill what the individual has taken is the nitrates. But what actually I wanted to show you in from this ECG, I wanted to show you that in patients with HOCM, also you have a dominant R wave in V1. So what are we discussing in this session? We are discussing the abnormalities of the R wave. Normally you don't have an R wave in V1. So the first thing like what we are discussing is abnormalities of the R wave is dominant R wave in V1. Okay. Right. Now you take the next ECG. 18 year old male presented with history of copious expectoration. ECG shown is as follows. Now options are Young syndrome, Cartagenet syndrome, William Campbell syndrome, incorrect limb placement. Now, what is the abnormality you are seeing in this ECG? The abnormality what you are seeing in this ECG is dominant R wave in AVR. Normally, you don't have a dominant R wave in AVR. You see this? See, this is the normal ECG. In this normal ECG, AVR, you see, it is completely a negative complex. It is not a positive complex. But if you take in this ECG, you are seeing that there is presence of dominant R wave in AVR. And Apart from that, you are also having the negative complex in lead 1. So, apart from that, you also are having negative complex in lead 1. In lead 1, you have the global negativity, right? Your P wave is also negative, QRS complex is also negative, and T wave is also negative. So, this we call it as the global negativity. Right, this we call it as the global negativity. Okay, and the other important thing what you are seeing here, there is absent R wave progression.
right there is absent r wave progression now you see this here this is your v1 v2 v3 v4 and even in v5 also you don't have the r wave and even in v6 also you don't have the r wave so this is called as an absent r wave progression in the chest leads okay and throughout what is that you are having you are having the dominant s wave right so throughout what is that you are having you are having dominant s wave throughout okay so now what is this particular diagnosis history of copious expectoration is there 18 year old male with this particular ecg changes now this is one of the differential diagnosis what you can think is bronchiectasis and the etiology of the bronchiectasis among the options given to you young syndrome is a cause for bronchiectasis cartagenous syndrome is also cause for bronchiectasis william campbell syndrome is also the cause for bronchiectasis then what is that you will fix as the answer now the answer is the cartagenous syndrome why are you considering it as a cartagenous syndrome why because this ecg changes whatever are given dominant r wave in avr presence of global negativity in lead 1 poor r wave progression all these they are suggestive of dextrocardia right all these they are suggestive of dextrocardia so in dex where do you have dextrocardia among the options given to you dextrocardia it is present in the cartagenous syndrome so let me tell you the components of the cartagenous syndrome the components of the cartagenous syndrome please remember this particular mnemonic ribs right ribs is the components of the cartagenous syndrome r stands for rhinosinusitis i stands for infertility b stands for bronchiectasis s stands for situs inversus right so this is what is the mnemonic for the components of the cartagenous syndrome rhinosinusitis infertility bronchiectasis and situs inversus right and situs inversus so that is what is nothing but your ribs hmm? that is what is nothing but your ribs okay so now situs inversus that is nothing but your dextrocardia right situs inversus that is nothing but your dextrocardia so the answer to this particular question is cartagenous syndrome and the diagnosis of the ecg is the dextrocardia right now this is the criteria for the dextrocardia right axis deviation positive qrs complex in avr lead 1 there should be global negativity and absent r wave progression in the chest leads okay right so this is the ecg of the dextrocardia okay now you see the next question 15 year male so that means what is the abnormality we have discussed regarding the r wave in this ecg right what i have discussed is presence of dominant r wave in avr that is what i have discussed that is what is the abnormality what i have discussed in this ecg okay next now 15 year male presented with history of dyspnea ecg is as follows what is the diagnosis gover sign is present in this particular patient babinski sign is present in this patient kusmal sign is present square root sign is present so what is the abnormality obviously like we are discussing the abnormalities of the r wave directly we will concentrate on the r wave so you have the presence of a dominant r wave in v1 right and i have given you a list of conditions where you will have a dominant r wave in v1 right one among that particular list of the conditions whatever i have given you is your muscular dystrophy is that is duchenne's muscular dystrophy and these patients with duchenne's muscular dystrophy by the age of 15 years to 20 years they will have they are completely wheelchair bound or they are completely bedridden and these patients with the duchenne's muscular dystrophy they will develop dilated cardiomyopathy secondary to that they can have dyspnea and in patients with the duchenne's muscular dystrophy they will have the presence of the gover sign so this is the ecg of duchenne's muscular dystrophy and in duchenne's muscular dystrophy you have the presence of the gover sign 
Now, what is your Gower sign? So, this is the Gower sign. The individual cannot get up. The individual has to climb on himself to get up completely. That is what is called as the Gower sign. Right? That is what is called as the Gower sign. Okay? Right. Now, after having discussed about the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in V1, now let me tell you the conditions where you will have dominant R wave in AVR. Dominant R wave in AVR, you will see in clinical scenarios like dextrocardia, dextrocardia I have said you the previously also, I have shown you the previously also, poisoning with sodium channel blocking agents that is tricyclic antidepressants, then incorrect lead placement that is right arm and left arm lead reversal, right, right arm leads place to left arm, left arm lead place to right arm and commonly elevated in case of the VT, ventricular tachycardia. Now I will show you all these ECGs, okay. Now if you take the ECG which is given to you here, what is this suggestive of? This is suggestive of, you don't have, yeah, so this is suggestive of your dextrocardia. Now why are you telling dextrocardia? Because you are having dominant R wave in AVR. You are having global negativity of lead 1. And there is also poor R wave progression in the precordial leads. That is what is the criteria for your dextrocardia. Right? The same thing is fulfilled also here. Okay? Next. You see the next question. 56 year female patient presented with history of dry mouth, giddiness on standing. ECG is as follows, neostigmine toxicity, amitriptyline toxicity, opioid toxicity, nitric oxide toxicity. So again, you concentrate directly on the R wave because we are discussing the R wave in this session. So the abnormality whatever you are seeing here is the presence of the dominant R wave in AVR. Right, the presence of dominant R wave in AVR. So what are the conditions you will have dominant R wave in AVR? Poisoning with the sodium channel blocking agent and one among that is the amitriptyline toxicity. Right, one among that is amitriptyline toxicity. So poisoning with sodium channel blocking agents that is tricyclic antidepressants. So this is the ECG in a patient with the amitriptyline toxicity and these tricyclic antidepressants, remember these individuals they will have or they can have these abnormal side effects like dry mouth and as well as giddiness on standing, right? Now, remember these tricyclic antidepressants mediate their cardiotoxic effect via blockade of myocardial fast sodium channels, right? So you have what is called the fast sodium channels. So by the blockade of the myocardial fast sodium channels, these individuals, they can have the cardiotoxic effect. All right, next. So, you see, what is the drug of choice for the following patient? Amidarone, lignocaine, flecainide. Right, so this is a wrong option here. So, this should be indapamide. Okay, now, so drug of choice for the following patient. Amidarone, lignocaine, flecainide and then the indapamide. Now, what is the abnormality you are having? There is a broad complex tachycardia. You can see the complexes, right? So the complexes, they are very broad. But why did I discuss this particular ECG in a clinical context of abnormalities of the R wave? Because you take this AVR. How is AVR? You have a positive complex AVR. Right? You have a positive R wave in AVR. Right? And this is the ECG suggestive of broad complex VT, right, broad complex tachycardia, which is nothing but your VT, ventricular tachycardia. And for ventricular tachycardia, what is the drug of choice? Lignocaine is the drug of choice. So, dominant R wave in AVR, number one, dextrocardia. Number two, right and left arm lead misplacement. And then, broad complex tachycardias like your VT and then tricyclic antidepressant toxicity. That is what I have shown you the previous ECG. Now I'll just show you one more ECG and please tell me the diagnosis. 
so the ecg complex is given and diagnosis dextrocardia right arm left arm lead reversal digoxin toxicity lateral wall mi so this is the ecg of right and left arm lead reversal why not dextrocardia see you are having dominant r wave in avr you are having global negativity of lead one why not dextrocardia dextrocardia there should be a poor r wave progression right there should be poor r wave progression but here how is the r wave progression this is a normal r wave progression so this is seen in case of right arm left arm lead reversal so in right arm left arm lead reversal and dextrocardia how do you differentiate that in dextrocardia you will have poor r wave progression but in right and as well as left arm lead reversal you will not have r wave progression in the chest leads so this is the differentiating point between these two right so this is the dextrocardia ecg you see in dextrocardia ecg you are having a poor r wave progression but that is not seen in case of the right arm and as well as the left arm reversal now the other last abnormality what we need to discuss regarding the r wave is poor r wave progression what are the conditions right see we have discussed one abnormality dominant r wave in v1 second abnormality dominant r wave in avr third abnormality we will discuss where you will have poor r wave progression first of all what do you understand by the word poor r wave progression so the criteria for the poor r wave progression is that poor r wave progression is described as the amplitude of the r wave less than 3 mm in v3 right the amplitude of the r wave less than or equal to 3 mm in v3 that is what is called as the poor r wave progression right you see this is your normal r wave progression in lead v3 your r wave and s wave should be almost like equiphasic but you take this particular complex see you can see here the r wave amplitude it is less than 3 mm this is nothing but your poor r wave progression now what are the conditions where you will have poor r wave progression right i'll just show you an ecg right you see this a 52 year male patient came for a routine checkup to a camp conducted in his workplace he gives a past history of a cardiac disorder what exactly is that he doesn't know his ecg is as follows what is the diagnosis asd device closure old anterior wall mi hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy rheumatic fever so this particular ecg is suggestive of the old anterior wall mi because in old anterior wall mi there will be a poor r wave progression right they are having poor r wave progression so you see this in v3 what did i discuss the r wave amplitude should be more than or equal to 3 mm but there is no r wave at all okay then why are you telling anterior wall mi can't it be dextrocardia no why because in case of the old anterior wall mi if you go back to my section of the q wave i said you in old mis there will be presence of the pathological q wave you see this this is the presence of this is your q wave right this is your q wave okay and along with the q wave you also have the t wave inversions right along with the q wave you also have the t wave inversion okay so one of the condition where you will have poor r wave progression is old or prior anterior wall mi right because why only anterior wall mi because your v1 v2 v3 v4 they are your anterior leads they pick up the electrical activity from the anterior wall right if the anterior wall is normal then you will have the r wave because the depolarization will be moving towards the electrode but if the anterior wall is dead then the depolarization will not be there and you will not have the r wave right next the other conditions where you can have the poor r wave progression is in case of left ventricular hypertrophy and as well as the prior the anterior septal mi now i will show you one more ecg right so if you see this ecg you can see here also you have poor r wave progression 
But what is this ECG suggestive of? This is the ECG suggestive of left ventricular hypertrophy. Right. So again, you go back to my discussion on the QRS complex. There I have taught you what is the criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy. The criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy is sokolov leon criteria. Right. sokolov leon criteria. Okay. So according to this sokolov leon criteria, what should be the, what is the criteria? SV1 plus RV6, if it is more than 35 mm, then this is called as sokolov leon criteria. Right. You see here. SV1 and RV6. Definitely they are more than 35 mm. So even in left ventricular hypertrophy, right, there is poor R wave progression. So the abnormalities of the R wave that you need to know at the end of the discussion is dominant R wave in V1, dominant R wave in AVR, poor R wave progression. So this completes the discussion of abnormalities of the R wave. Thank you very much.